to our channel, we are Deuce Garage. We are talking tools and in the fixing cars. Make sure that you subscribe, cause all the stars you'll see. If you've got a project, but this is where you wanna be, Deuce Garage. Welcome to Deuce Garage. Yeah, we're talking cars. Welcome to Duke's Garage. Today we're doing an oil pan um, drop and clean and reinstallation on this 2004 Cadillac CTS. This is a first gen CTS. Uh, you may notice the engine is somewhat apart here. Um, I'm doing this in um, tandem with a timing chain job on this vehicle. So look for that on, on this car as well. Uh, I'll be posting that or it may already be posted at this time but check that out if you need to update or uh, repair your timing chain I'm doing a very detailed um, exhaustive <laughs> I guess you could say exhaustive uh, re, um, uh, step by step video on doing the timing chains on these cars uh, or if you have any 3.6 GM uh, vehicle um, this car this motor was in, a, in several different GM vehicles um, the Buick Rendezvous um, the CTS um, a handful of other cars have this 3.6 in there with the two-stage uh, timing chain, but uh, as part of this job, I'm actually going to need to drop the oil pan. So we had a uh, guide that blew out. This has all been replaced now. Everything is in there complete, but we had a guy go out and this uh, liner here shot off the car and got you know kicked around in the motor. I'm pretty certain there are pieces that dropped down in the oil pan, so... We're going to drop the, the pan, uh, clean it out, make sure everything is good, and then reinstall it. So let's uh, get it going. One of the first things you need to do is to fix um, fix a some type of bar, an engine brace. Um, you could also use an engine hoist. I've done this job on a different vehicle using a hoist. The issue with the hoist is that the feet on the hoist that go onto the car, you know, they kind of get in the way, and you end up having to lay on top of those... Uh, those you know metal legs of the hoist so one of these engine braces are great this is a harbor freight job here um, 75 bucks and uh, you get a little zoom in here Pittsburgh engine support bar $75 um, you know you might be able to borrow one from a friend or something but I mean this is a tool you may use one two times um, just, you know, depending on how many cars you have and how much, you know, you do this type of work uh, yourself, but it's not going to be a tool you're going to probably use a whole lot, but it sure is nice to have. And for $75, you know, it's not, not the most expensive tool and it really is handy and makes it a safe, uh, a safe operation. So these chains need to be, uh, bolted onto the side of the vehicle. These 3.6 cars actually have a bracket. Um, I'll put it on the screen. There's a, there's a part number for it. And they'll hook on to the side of the motor on each side. And there's a bolt here that you can pull out and hook it to. Um, since I have my uh, front cover off the car, I'm just using one of these front bolts that are for the cover. And that should be plenty strong to hold the motor up. Uh, the back of the motor is really being supported by the transmission. So it's just the front half of the motor. So um, yeah, we're in, we're in good shape here. Everything's snug down. So um, just want to make sure they're, you know, they're tight and that will allow us to now um, unbolt the uh, front motor mounts for the engine, drop out that lower, uh, there's a part of the subframe that can come out of the way and that gives us clearance to get the uh, oil pan out. So now we'll work from the bottom side of the car and start making room. The shop manual I'm using says that we need to remove this AC bracket. On the AC compressor. Now I can definitely see there's one bolt uh, right down here. Let me zoom in on it. There's one bolt right there that's actually hooked to the face of the of the um, wall pan. So that for sure has to come out. I'm going to just pull that one bolt and see how much problems we have removing the pan and leaving the rest of the AC bracket intact. So that's the AC bracket here. So that bracket's on there. So they're saying to move that whole thing and move it to the side. 
it may be necessary to get uh, access to the side bolts by that AC compressor, but let's just take a look underneath the car first. So if there's anything we can do that may, you know, save us some time and avoid us from doing some un unnecessary uh, pulling apart, uh, I'm all for it. Also, there's a bolt here for the uh, transmission cooler lines. I've already started to back it out. Let me see if I can get down in there. Light on here. I already started to back out the bolt, so it's just a matter of getting a good look at it. There it is there. So you see the AC cooler lines. There's a bolt right there at the top. Yeah, it looks like the AC cooler lines would be in the way of the side of the pan. So you want to release any, anything that's holding the uh, cooler lines along the side of the oil pan and be able to slide the, oil, uh, the cooler lines, you know, to the side out of the way some. So we're going to pull that bolt out. All right, so obviously under the vehicle. And you're going to see this is the passenger side, driver side. You're going to see a brace running across here, part of this front, front subframe. And you'll see some pretty big holes. Here, we have to pull the bolts here. This is the lower side of the engine mounts, the bolt that holds the engine mount from the bottom side. We're gonna pull those, and that's gonna allow us to lift the motor up to make clearance to get into all these bolts around the transmission pan. So yeah, we're gonna need to lift her up and start working on these bolts. Uh, but before we do that, though, I can't forget, it's time to drop the oil. With the lower motor mount bolts removed, we're now able to start to crank the motor up. When you spin these, it's lifting the motor up away from that, uh, away from the uh, low lower subframe. Excuse me. A little winded from jumping underneath the car five, six times. Not in the best shape. <laughs> I'm working on it though guys, um, that'll be another video. So yeah, now we're able to lift the vehicle up and I'll zoom you down here. You can start to see like the clearance we're getting down at the bottom part of the motor. Down here, we're making room so that we can get to those bolts and get that pan out of there. So I don't know how much we're going to need to come up. Um, I spun it up, I, I can definitely say we're above probably about an inch from where we were before. So I'm, not, I'm just gonna take it easy and uh, see how far it's necessary. I'm gonna go just as far as we absolutely have to go. And then, um, you know, I'm not gonna go crazy moving it because the back half of this is resting on the transmission mounts. So I don't wanna torque them too hard. All right, at the oil pan and you'll be able to see up in there, I pulled the bolts already, there's four bolts. They're running along the sides of the pan. Then there's these long guys that are right here by the transmission. There's two of those. Then back here on the transmission, they come through and catch the oil pan. So there's two here I see. And there's gonna be two on the other side here. There's one of them right there. You gotta pull those bolts out then the pan should have enough room to drop and be able to be levered out of here. So let's get those last four bolts and then uh, get this pan out. We now have the pan loose and I will tell you that loosening up the AC compressor bracket is definitely beneficial because the pan's going to start to rotate and that bracket's going to be in the way. So the shop manual is correct and you'll have to pull the bolts out of the bracket and it'll just sit to the side a little bit. Um, you gotta really be careful and make sure you get every last bolt out. I'll show you the locations when I pull the pan, but I actually had one I missed. So that was a little frustrating. I had to find out. It was hanging up. I said, it's gotta be another bolt in there. And sure enough, there was. So I got the bolt out. So now we're gonna need to jack this motor up some. I'm gonna show you what's going on on the bottom side. All right, so we're looking up through uh, from the driver's side and you kind of see the side of the pan there see it's starting to come loose but it's bumping on the on the front of the uh transmission so we're going to need to lift the motor up more take the motor up and that'll create more room for the 
the pan to lever its way out of there. So I think another couple inches should give us enough clearance to uh, have the pan fall out of there. So we're back around the front of the motor. And uh, we're going to just rotate these and keep jacking this motor up. It's going to start to lift up more and more. So we're going to go ahead and spin both of those up evenly and create some more room. Okay, we're going to need to lower the subframe. So we don't want to pull the bolts all the way out. But we do need to lower this frame just a little bit. And there's some bolts up here. There's one there. There's one up in this hole here. And they correspond on the other side. We just want to loosen it and let it drop down about an inch or so. We have the engine hoisted as far up as we can go before we hit the uh, firewall. So plenty of room on that side, but um, not enough on the bottom side. Um, so we're going to just lower the subframe some, but in order to do that safely, we're going to keep in mind our steering rack is hooked to the subframe. So we're going to need to come under here and find our steering shaft and put a light on it here. steering shaft and there's a nut that holds and you just kind of see that nut peeking out there the nut that holds the uh, top part of the shaft to the bottom part of the shaft we need to pull that nut so that it has room to loosen up and then we'll have to re reattach it so loosen up the steering shaft uh, bolt center bolt there and then we'll go ahead and loosen up the lower subframe and then we should have room to drop the pan all right we have the oil pan out of the vehicle and something very concerning I pulled the, the strainer the, the pickup tube and I found pieces of that liner from the tensioner just stuffed in there so my instincts to pull the oil pan were good, plus it just looks like hell. I could use a good cleaning. But uh, now my concern is, did the engine get starved on oil? And, uh, you know, what does that mean for the car now? So, that's a scary proposition. We're going to find out. Alright, so here is the freshly cleaned up oil pan a good once over actually uh, three times already. she's all cleaned up that's the the bottom half there and then a couple pieces here that also had to be cleaned this is, on top. This is your pickup tube obviously and I cleaned up that uh, the bottom part of it there the pickup part cleaned up the screen so now it's time to reassemble the pan sits right in there got two bolts one here one there hold that down and then we'll put that in the tray here backwards that's nice to know you can't put it in backwards there you go so everything lines up nice and uh, bolt it all back up Time to do the car. don't forget to go through these little grooves here Side of the, of the pan, that's also going to be a matting surface or a, a sealing surface. This is where the cover, the front cover, seals up to. So you want to make sure you get that good and clean too. So I say she's looking a thousand times better than the way she came out of the car. So we're going to bolt it up and time to reinstall. The oil pan is all assembled and I put a bead. You want to do a bead of like a sixteenth to a quarter inch all the way around, a continuous bead with no breaks. 
and you see how I went around the bolt holes on the inner side and um, I'm going to let it just set up a little bit just to let it flash over and then we're going to go ahead into the car and uh, put it in place. It's going to be a little tricky so we don't want to bump any of the gasket maker when we go to sit it in place. We're really going to take our time. I want to lift it up into place start a couple screws I don't want to push it up to the mating surface just yet I just want to start a couple screws get the screws going around it and then we'll go ahead and you know once we know we have it all lined up push it up to the other uh, mating surface and just uh, hand tighten all of them down and uh, I'm going to give it about an hour to uh, kind of set up and then I'll go ahead and finish torquing them down let me show you what we got here I'm actually going to put this image on the screen um, so you can see it a little better. But this is the torque sequence for the oil pan. So once you have all the bolts in, just snugged, not torqued down, but snugged, it actually gives you uh, the order in which to torque at that point. And also I want to add in there that the outer ones, the M8 bolts, um, they need to be torqued down. Let me turn this around here. They need to be torqued down at 17 foot pounds or 204 inch pounds, depending on what kind of, uh, if you have an inch pound or a foot pound uh, torque wrench. And then the um, smaller bolts at the back where the rear main seal is at, those are M6 bolts. They have to be torqued at 89 inch pounds. So we're going to get into the car. I'm going to show you what's going on here. So I'm going to apologize in advance for coming back and having the the pan installed and not kind of showing you how I got it in there but it's really straightforward uh, once you have these uh, these back bolts uh, pulled from the front um, subframe remember keep the front ones loose but not not too far I mean you just want to loosen them up to drop the back ones and then you can see here the um, steering like we pulled out the bolt from the uh, steering linkage that was important whenever we started to drop the uh, lower subframe down because it actually has about an inch of space between the top part of the linkage so you know once you have it down you kind of really get yourself some room here and it uh, slid right in the biggest challenge is when you're levering it up into the position you want to try to avoid this guy which is not too hard but the bigger pain in the neck where these transmission cooler lines, they were just, you know, really in the way a lot. Even with them disconnected from the, the bracket that holds them, they still were kind of hard to move. So, you know, do your best, but try to really keep that in mind whenever you're putting the uh, pan into place. Then, you know, you want to have at least a couple bolts handy to hold it in the place with one hand and then just start some screws on the other side. Set a screw up and, and then do the other side. And then you can start to work it in. Um, so what I did is I went around the entire pan. And you know, we went up here and we just snugged them down. You know what I mean? We went there with the extension, snugged them down. And when I say snug, like, just put your hand on the, the top of the wrench. And just, you know, really just give it like a little turn there. You don't have to go too hard. Snug them down good all the way around. Then wait an hour. For this uh for this gasket if you use the uh the silicone type of gasket maker wait about an hour for it to kind of cure a little bit more and then now we're going to follow up with uh torquing all the um the bolts down and don't forget these i got one that's still not in there i'm going to show you these back bolts they go in here and you got two on this side you got two on this side do the top bolt first and, and torque it down and then this guy has a little a little uh, um, uh, bracket that goes in, in here this gets in the way of tightening the top bolt so you want to do the top bolt first then you can pull this over and do the bottom bolt on the other side pretty much free and clear there's nothing nothing in the way these, these rails I kind of had to run my racket through this little opening here to get to that bolt in the bottom but Really, you're pretty much free and clear. So, it's also a good time just to kind of look under the engine. And just look back through here and see if you see anything that's out of whack. 
Um, one problem we do have here is that this is the connection for the uh, oil pressure switch down here, or the oil level switch, excuse me, the oil level switch. And um, this used to have a piece of uh, wire um, cover on it, and it totally disintegrated. You can see some of the bits and pieces that fell down to the ground. So I'm going to replace this with another piece of uh, wire loom, wire cover, just to protect these wires and uh, seal them up. So that's really about it, but um, everything is back in place. Again, I do apologize. I, I didn't really have any way to kind of prop the camera up so you could see me as I was dropping the pan in place. But once you get to the point where you have, you know, the opening enough here to get the pan out, I mean, it's really a very straightforward process to put the pan back in. It's not, it's not a big deal. So don't know whether you watching me actually put the pan in place is really going to help that much. But um, I kind of just wanted to show you where everything was at, so I usually do my best to give you the most detailed videos I can, maybe even a little bit too detailed, um, just so you don't, you know, you have as much information as possible before you start the job. Uh, but this is one time where uh, it just was kind of hard to get a, a, a video of me actually laying it in place and not kind of mess myself up, dancing around the camera and all that. Now it's time to put the subframe back together. Great. We're going to need our, our bolt and it's going to go up into here. Go into the hole, start screwing it back together. You got to keep in mind as we screw it up into place, you want to guide this back towards the uh, upper part so it doesn't get stuck because if you screw it back in you probably won't get past here you really want to make sure you have it guiding it you're guiding it back into that uh, upper uh, linkage and I'm going to tighten this thing down and then check and once I start getting close to that upper linkage I'm going to guide it in place I'll tell you what I'm talking about so Right up there is the upper linkage. I'm just going to try to guide this guy into the hole as we uh, tighten the lower subframe into place. You can see the oil pans all nice and snug and looking good. Torqued everything down, so let's get to it. that wire all dressed up uh, for the oil level sensor. You can see she's looking real good. Let me uh, try to get you in focus here. So I'll just put a piece of you know uh, wire cover on there, a little loom on there and uh, a couple wire ties just to keep her in place. And she's all she's all locked in and uh, up there is a little clip up top of here that you see there it um little piece of metal with a hole on the end of it, a little connector here. It allows you to push in a plastic uh, wire tie slash uh, holder just to keep that wire neatly in place. So that's all good. All right, so we're going to finish tightening up the subframe. Now with the subframe all tightened up, you can start to lower the motor back down. So we're going to spin these free and then uh, keep an eye to make sure that the lower part of the engine mount is going down into the hole in the subframe. I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, with my new clean oil pan all set up in place, I sat that piece of cardboard in there. This is something you want to do as soon as you pull the cover off if you're not planning on 
uh, taking your oil pan down and uh, cleaning it out. Um, I would tell you again, if you've lost any of, any of these liners, good chance they ended up down in the pan, and uh, that'll probably be picked up by your uh, pickup tube down there. So you're really going to want to pull that pan out and clean that tube off and get all the junk out of the oil pan. But uh, if you're good and all your liners and everything is still intact, um, you just may have a stretch chain or something to that effect, or a, a bad tensioner, then you know make sure you put a piece of cardboard to keep debris from dropping down in your oil pan. All right, here's the uh, position I want to show you. So we're going to let this guy drop right into the hole. And uh, so you can kind of see up in there, that's where the bolt's coming through. And there's actually a locator pin to the right there. So we're just going to let it drop on in. We're just going to make sure we're guiding him down. It should drop straight in though. I had to kind of adjust the bolt to line up with the hole by tapping it a little bit. You want to kind of do that before you start letting any pressure off or getting too close. Okay, let's not forget to put our nuts back on the uh, bottom half of the of the uh, engine mount. So we're gonna go wrap in this hole, bolt these on both sides, and we should be all good. All right, don't forget to put your oil plug back. <laughs> 